Ok, this is Rafi Media Villa from Criticologos.com. Jade, thank you for taking the time to talk about the movie and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So be before we, we dive into the questions, I got to tell you, uh, I, I want you to write a modern version of Cruel Intentions and just cast Jenna Ortega <laughs> and the two of you just ran around you're wrong with it because all throughout the movie, I was being my jaw with my jaw on the floor because of how personal, how emotional this story is. And I was envisioning the two of you just doing it, doing this again with just something, you know, to, to another level. So congratulations also on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's actually, I'm so glad you said that because when we were trying to sell this movie, Cruel Intentions was one of our comps for the movie because it's so, because it's so beautiful and the characters are so mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that, it, that, that to me was the first thing about the movie when I saw it, that it stood out like this, this feels so much like Cruel Intentions in the, when it comes to the emotions and the, the, and, and the how personal the story is. But this is your first project. First movie for everything written and directed. Uh, how did what what happened? Who, who inspired this? What inspired you to write the story? How did this came about? Um, so I was living in New York City, uh, and I was I was an actress that wasn't getting any jobs, and I um was like I, I was like, what am I gonna do with my certificate of participation from an acting school? So I um called one of my very best friends, Julianne, who is really really extraordinary actress and I knew I just wanted to build something around her I wanted to try to write but I'd never I wasn't a writer till I was like 25 years old um and so I called her and I said if you could play any character who would it be and she said Rhoda Penmark from the Bad Seed who if you recall is a psychopathic killer child mm -hmm. so I was like I was like okay um okay then I'm gonna write a villain and it was originally a play and that was in 2011 and then me too happened and i realized that i had not one villain but two and i as i was sort of going through my journey with me too and sort of understanding my internalized misogyny that i couldn't even see i didn't see the villain that i'd written right in front of me but now now after me too within the story not only did i have two characters who I guess you could say villain, like I use that word lightly because I don't think they are, I don't think they are all the way villain or victim. And suddenly I had characters across the board, like the whole court is out of order in this movie, right? So like two characters who are neither the perfect villain nor the perfect victim, neither of them fit the binary, which suddenly became, I think, so much more rich for the characters, for the actors, um, and for the story to tell. Like, I think I personally feel like writing the perfect victim and typically it's women or like in my experience, it's been women in my experience as an actor, it was even playing women like that. Like, I think it's really boring, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not real. And it just keeps women in, the, I call it the damsel box. It just keeps women in the same, trapped in the same space. It's just got new wrapping on it, you know? And I, I want to, I want to see and write characters that are more complex than that, mm -hmm. you know? I want to talk about working with Jenna Ortega and obviously Martin Freeman. I know everybody has asked you how, how, how was it working with them, but I don't want to ask that. I want to ask what did they what what did you working with them in set with such a personal and 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 such a vulnerable story such as this one? What did they brought to the table that you just said, yeah, we're going with that with this how how it just went went about? What happened with that with, with the two of them in set? Oh, so Martin, um, I wrote Martin a letter and I was like, <laughs> and I knew, I knew it was a shot in the dark, like, LOL that I, I mean, like, you know, who the fuck am I to him? And I wrote, excuse me, I'm so sorry. And I wrote him a letter and I was like, please, please talk to me. And he did. Um, and we spoke for like two hours on Zoom and he just really understood the content. He understood the character. He understood the story I was trying to tell. He understood that this was going to be really complicated and really, really nuanced. Um, and because Martin is so, Martin is like a surgeon of an actor. He's so deft and so precise, um, but he's also very tender and kind and generous. And so I think it would be very easy for Jonathan or for Cairo for those characters to become quite arch, you know, or to become or or to seem quite pretentious. And because John, of course, is is a villain in this story, Martin, however, gives him such warmth that you 
it's hard to it's hard to resist liking him, which mm-hmm. I really loved. And then of course Jenna, Jenna is Jenna can do this thing. I could ask her to drop a tear on a word, on a syllable, in a line, and 10 times out of 10, she could do it every time, but every time she would do something different. And Jenna understands, um, she understands heartbreak in a way like you, that basically you watch her heartbreak on screen and you watch her calcify, you watch that armor grow over her. And it's so subtle and it's so terrifying but she still has, despite that she turns into a bug at the end of this movie, she's so, there's still so much heart within her. It's almost like she, she's fully calcified, crystallized, but there's still this like thread beating inside of her. And that is very, very hard to show, especially in a character that is so, could, again, could very easily be really, really played like a super villain. But Cairo's not a super villain. She's mm-hmm. many things, you know, and Jenna... Jenna brought an incredible, both of them did. They brought incredible humanity to these characters. Um, I want to ask about you being a fair, uh, you, this is your first project. And this, and this, isn't, uh, this, this question is mostly for inspired people that look at you and say, hey, I can, I can make this happen. But I wonder, and I want, I want, I want, I want to ask about what went to your mind when, you know, Lionsgate, didn't like the project and they said, yeah, we'll distribute the, the project. What did, what did it mean to you as a filmmaker to have a distributor like this one take a shot on your story as personal as it is, as, 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 uh, as not a controversial, but it's going to, it's going to spark a conversation. What did that mean to you? Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I feel like I sound like Pollyanna when I talk about it. Cause it's, I'm so kind of, I, I, not that I can't believe this happened to me. I have worked very hard in my career, I worked very hard as a writer. Um, it's, you know, it it is magical. Like I'm making movies, which is crazy. Um, and I'm making movies with people that I really love. Um, I like the executives, all the executives on this, pro- all of the executives on this project and including assistants, um, everybody that has touched this project from the studio to every last member of the crew to all of the actors, um, everybody just really understood the assignment. Everybody knew what we were making. Um, and so my producing partner, Mary Margaret Kunze, who produced on the film, um, she's also actually the person that swipes us out at the end of the film. Um, she she and I, when we were putting this film together with heads of department and with cast and crew and all of that, like we just knew that we had the opportunity to build a family um, and that we're not we're not doing very dangerous work like some other people in this world are doing. We are making movies. So it should be fun and it should be safe and it should be kind. And now kind and nice are different, but we knew that in choosing the people that we wanted to work with, like we were really selective with it. And so because we were, and because the studio was so so generously understood what my project was and gave me a shot, um, I just knew that it had to be I had to do it to the best of my ability and to the best of my ability will always be kindness. Like, I think that is the height of anything mm-hmm. you, any way that you can do anything. And so it created, um, it just created like a super family. We're all still very, very close, which is, which is wonderful. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And I'm also like, still a little like starry eyed <laughs> about it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's time for me. Thank you like, once again for your time and congratulations on the movie. I loved it. I love what I saw. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.